This is the GIS News Hour for Monday, 21st May. I am Leslie Ann Johnson Cornwall. In the headlines, hundreds turn out to support Prime Minister at Thanksgiving rally, a call for inclusion of academia if the EPA is to work, and close to 50 young people become full fledged national youth ambassadors. Details are next. Shop online at your favorite stores around the world and your package will be delivered to your doorstep right here in Grenada. The Grenada Postal Corporation brings you closer to the rest of the world with GPC Global. GPC Global is a new, exciting, and cost-effective service. For less than $20 US, you can have your own personal mailbox in the US and off you go shopping. You can view your shipment as it moves 24-7 with up-to-the-minute tracking. Make your purchase and GPC Global will do the rest, even customs clearance. We make it easy and hassle-free. GPC Global, the world at your fingertips. Dependable, reliable, and safe. Sometimes, the simplest joys in life can be the most rewarding. For quality sexual and reproductive healthcare services, Make the GPPA your next stop. Visit our offices at St. George's and Grenville. Call 440-3341 or 442-5442 for more information. The Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, promoting healthy living. Welcome back, viewers. Hundreds turned out Sunday to throw their support behind Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas at a Thanksgiving rally in St. Andrew. It was held just days after the Prime Minister won a vote of no confidence tabled in Parliament by the leader of the opposition. Details in this report. The chance of a cross-section of the crowd that gathered at the Grenville car park on Sunday to participate in the Prime Minister's Thanksgiving rally. The rally was held in the aftermath of the Prime Minister defeating a no-confidence motion brought against him in Parliament by the opposition New National Party. In the motion, the opposition questioned the ability of the Prime Minister to effectively manage the business of the country, citing a number of reasons. But Prime Minister Thomas garnered majority support to continue in his role. Sunday's Thanksgiving rally heard messages in support of the Prime Minister from a number of individuals and organizations. Pastor Gerard Keynes Douglas, in offering encouragement to the Grenadian leader, reminded supporters that God is in charge. He urged Prime Minister Thomas to hold strong and remain diligent in his service to the country. The word of God says that the powers that be are ordained of God for good. Sir, until the God says otherwise, you are the man for this time as Prime Minister of this country. Until the people say otherwise by a vote against you or otherwise, you are the man of the moment. And so I would say to you in the words given to Joshua, be strong and be diligent in the work that you do. You are accountable to God and to this nation. Do not fear, be not dismayed. Be strong in the work that you are called to do. The Methodist Church of the Caribbean and the Americas, in a message read by chairperson for the afternoon's celebrations, Health Minister Senator Ann Peters, also urged Prime Minister Thomas to stand resolute. Be focused. Run your course with joy and seek strength and grace from God, who is your source. Do not be moved because of attacks, but stand firm with a clear and honest heart 
to fulfill the mandate God assigns you. Executive Director of the Council for the Disabled, Ms. Hilary Gabriel, in her message, highlighted the many ways government, through the Ministry of Social Development, has facilitated and supported the work of her organization and, by extension, persons with disabilities, and expressed their gratitude. May I tell the Prime Minister and his team, be rest, rest assured that the Grenada National Council of the Disabled is committed to continue supporting the government and your, and your team. May God continue to shower his blessing on this government, thus enabling Prime Minister Thomas and his team to continue steering this country in the right direction. Prime Minister Tillman Thomas updated the crowd of supporters estimated by police to be well over 2,000 on the way forward for his administration. In his show of appreciation to the nation, the Prime Minister gave thanks to God and to the people for their continued support. He also expressed his appreciation to his parliamentary colleagues for their unwavering support of his leadership, which defeated the vote of no confidence 8 to 5. Prime Minister Thomas urged those present to continue to hold leaders responsible for their behavior. When politicians do not live up to high standards, the people become skeptical and come to distrust politics and politicians. There should never be one standard for the politicians and a different one for the rest of society. Politics should not be viewed as a bad thing. As leaders, we should strive to change this perception. And you, the public, must keep us in line. Support for the leadership of Prime Minister Thomas also came from founding member of the NDC, Finsley St. Louis, and representatives of the youth and women's arm of the party. They joined Finance Minister and Deputy Political Leader of the NDC, Nazim Burke, Minister for Agriculture, Michael Lett, Minister for Youth, Empowerment and Sports, Patrick Simmons, Senator Ann Peters, and newly appointed Minister for Tourism, Dr. George Vincent. I'm Wendy Chateau, reporting for the GIS NewsHour. There must be total inclusion in the process involving the Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA, if it is to work. So says Dr. Nigel Grave Sandy, who is concerned that the error of CARI Forum is the exclusion of academia as part of the stakeholder consultation process. Dr. Grave Sandy, who was one of the presenters at a recent discussion on CARI Forum EU EPA, said there is too much focus on the political actors. The EPA was signed on October 15, 2008, by the European Community and members of CARI Forum, CARICOM, and the Dominican Republic. And according to Dr. Grave Sandy, this signaled a new era of trade relations between both parties. He says the agreement must be seen as a strategic vision to assist CARI Forum to build larger markets. I believe that EPA units in the OECS must engage with and rely more on the cooperation and support of all tertiary institutions. That's where you have the academic and intellectual capital resident in individual member states. Ministries of government and agencies, non-governmental organizations, the media, the churches, and civil society generally. Colleagues, it can hardly be disputed that the development support that the EPA promises must be seen as an instrument for strengthening the implementation capacity and the resources needed to take the CARICOM single market and economy forward. This, my dear friends, is the critical feature of the economic relations between CARICOM and the European Union. The EPA was created through an intense negotiating process which was undertaken in four stages over a period of three years. Dr. Grave Sandy believes the EPA will provide opportunities for the OECS to build a framework to allow the sub-region to compete in a liberalized global economy, but he believes it will be beneficial only in the context of the CSME. Individual territories will find it difficult to compete in the European market because of the challenges of size. There is no question that the larger economies of the region would be in a better position to diversify their economies than the very small ones. 
But if the region is able to plan and to coordinate economic activities, to channel resources to the areas where they can be most productive, I believe the overall welfare will improve. What is needed now is the consistency of scenarios that incorporates all the structural variables necessary to operate successfully in an internationally trading system that is based on reduced tariff and non-reciprocal trading arrangements. I believe and I contend that the full implementation of the CSME is essential to the successful implementation of the EPA. Meanwhile, EPA National Coordinator Desmond John says the EPA Implementation Unit and the government have undertaken a study that assesses the trade and revenue effects of the implementation of tariff liberalization schedule. That consultancy has been undertaken, not completed yet. In fact, um, only on Tuesday we had um, reviewed the first draft of that report. And yes, what we have uh, realized is that there will be um, some revenue losses. Uh, the consultant is expected to make recommendations concerning measures that we can use to recoup some of the losses. Um, so that has been done for Grenada. Uh, I do not know, I know that in 2006, there was an OECS-wide um, consultancy that assessed the impact of the EP on the OECS. The conclusion was that it was going to be moderate. Barbados' Prime Minister Frondel Stewart says the second CARICOM Mexico summit being held in that country should be used to select the priority areas where they believe the modern relationship between Mexico and CARICOM should concentrate its energies. The meeting is being attended by Grenada's Prime Minister, the Honorable Tillman Thomas, and representatives from the other CARICOM member states. Addressing the opening, the Barbadian Prime Minister said, with Mexico being one of the most open economies in the world and opportunities provided for partnerships in trade and investment with the region, especially in the context of the CSME. He also added that Mexico's crucial role as current chair of the G20 represents a unique opportunity for the concerns of the region's small and marginalized to be brought to the attention of next month's G20 summit. Also addressing the opening was CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin Larocque. He applauded the mutually beneficial relationship enjoyed by both groups since the formation of a joint commission in 1974. Larock added that the program of cooperation over the period has been characterized by the building of collaborative relations between CARICOM technical institutions and their counterparts in Mexico, like the relations developed between the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SIDEMA. The Chief Technical Officer in the Ministry of Works says there is a member representing the Grenada Bus Association on the Grenada Transport Board. He was speaking in light of recent media releases by the association. Mr. Cecil Harris says the representative is appointed by the Minister of Works. In that regard, there is a representative in the form of a past executive member who is being properly appointed by the Minister on the board. The CTO says there was no formal letter sent to the ministry indicating plans for an election, but a letter was received by the Transport Board indicating that a new executive had been appointed. This was followed by a letter from another bus association stating that the grounds under which the new executive was elected was improper. No, we were not prior to. Uh, subsequent to the election of the new executive, the new executive wrote a letter to the Grenada Transport Board informing them of this new executive that had been appointed, um, which was, and they said they would uh, um, make an arrangement, an appointment to meet the minister and introduce themselves. Subsequent to that, uh, we got a letter from uh, one of the uh, bus associations um, indicating uh, various grounds upon which they felt that the uh, new executive was improperly um, elected and uh, they, indeed, they outlined their, their reasoning behind it. He says he also received a call from the new president confirming a new executive was in place. 
Secretary, I subsequently got a call from the new ex uh, president uh, who, in the who confirmed that yes, they were the new executive, uh, yes, the constitution had been suspended, and in fact, he wanted some information from me to assist in his, um, to assist in his uh, 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 revising the, the, ex the, the constitution of the NBE. Um, so that's where the matter lies right now. Close to 50 young people are now fully accredited as National Youth Ambassadors. This follows a service held over the weekend. Details from Stevenson Worm of the Ministry of Youth. The National Youth Ambassador appointment ceremony was held on Sunday at Levera Park, St. Patrick's. 45 young persons were given their instrument of appointment, making them full-fledged National Youth Ambassadors. Youth Service and Leadership Coordinator in the Ministry of Youth Empowerment and Sports, Jacqueline Alexis, welcomed the new ambassadors to the program. To the new ambassadors, as you pick up the baton from your predecessors, I warmly, warmly welcome you to the program and I look forward with anticipation to the impact you will make on your peers, your communities and your country. Ms Alexis expressed thanks to the outgoing youth ambassadors. So to those of you who have come to the end of your tenure, Please remember you were the first, the trailblazers, and your legacy will live on. We are deeply grateful for your contributions, your energy, and your commitment to the program. As you leave the program, I wish you each and every one an exciting, productive, and successful, successful professional and personal life. I hope your experience with us has benefited you in some way and that you will look upon your time with the program as a positive experience. On hand to address the youth ambassadors was coordinator of youth affairs, Kevin Andel. He told the newly appointed youth ambassadors that they must have integrity to be effective role models. In order for you to be a person of influence, you must have integrity. What is that thing called integrity? Integrity really is doing what is right adhering to the moral principles and ethical, moral and ethical principles, strongness of moral character and honesty. The great Solomon said that a good name is more desirable than great riches. A good name is more desirable than great riches. There are a lot of rich people that really don't have a good name. But if you have a good name, you can influence people in a good way. Kareem Salab, one of the ambassadors, explained why he became involved in the program. My love for youth is really the main drive that made me join the Youth Ambassador Program and um, also my desire to make a change because we all have the potential to make positive and negative change and I'm, I'm here to prove to young people that we, we possess the, the, the the talent to make positive change. Under the Youth Ambassadors program, participants are expected to maintain high moral standards, good conduct, and excellent interpersonal relationship. The National Youth Ambassadors program was launched on April 18, 2010. Stevenson Worm, Public Relations Officer, Ministry of Youth Empowerment and Sports, reporting. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. is supposed to be my comfort zone, yet I'm in fear and feel so alone. My mother receives money, yes, money from men who sexually abuse me. I tried to tell my mom, but she won't listen to me. She said, he's my big brother, my uncle, your father, my man. Don't call anyone's name. I never wanted this. I need to tell someone. Please, help me. A message from the Ministry of Social Development and its social partners. Does bad weather bring back flashes of the past? 
Does depression and feelings of hopelessness make you want to give up on life? Does uncontrollable anger, frustration and stress push you to commit violent crimes? It's okay to be scared. You're not losing your mind. Suicide is such a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Once you go down that road, there's no turning back. When tempers flare, think twice. Walk away. Let's all get involved. Talk to someone today about the way you feel. Call the Legal Aid and Counseling Clinic or the Ministry of Social Services. A message from the Wellness Committee. Continuing the news, a tour of areas in Grenada which are known for root crop production formed part of activities leading up to a national root festival here in early June. Details from Richard Peters of the Ministry of Agriculture. The Ministry of Agriculture's root crop festival and exhibition will go a long way in supporting the government of Grenada's call for Grenadians to produce more food and eat more of the food that they produce. This was the view of Minister for Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, Michael Dennis Lett, as he joined members of the media on a tour of the Laura government farm, where a variety of root crops are produced. Mr. Lett said, We have developed a policy within the, um, the Ministry of Agriculture to encourage our people to eat what they grow and grow what they eat. And from what we have seen, the display that we have seen today, is that there are plenty of different varieties of yams, cassava, and uh, other crops, corn and other things like that, potato that you'll be able to get our farmers or housewives to use, to eat what they grow and grow what they eat. Um, we have seen that the, um, whenever a hurricane passes, it destroys the plants above ground. That's why we are concentrating on the plants underground, the tuba, tubers or that underground, because these won't be destroyed by hurricane. And a lot of them can last for a long, a long pe period before they start um, decaying. The tour was organized by the ministry as a means of giving the media a first-hand insight into what the ministry is doing as its part in promoting the production of root crops and encouraging its use as a replacement for many of the imported forms of carbohydrates such as rice, macaroni, and wheat flour. Member of the Root Crop Festival Committee and supervisor of the Southern Agricultural District, James Mahone, Said. What we hope to achieve is the overall increase in the production of food crops. Now, many years ago, when you travel throughout Grenada, the ridges were more or less covered with root crops, sweet potato, yams, uh, tania, and so on. Today, you pass around, you see a lot of high woods, bush, and, and some instances, buildings. What we hope to do is to you know, get back into root crop production in a serious way. We're also hoping to, uh, to increase the quality of the root crops in, in our country. Laura is one of the ministry's main facilities for the propagation of root crops and distribution of planting material. Many varieties are experimented with, as farm supervisor Joseph Ragbasing explains. What we are doing here is um, planting about three or four different root crops. So we have first, we have the yams we have uh, six different variety of yams that we are planting here we also have um, cassava and potato um, and we're doing some mini setting in tanya so um, we have about presently we plant about half an acre of lisbon yam and um, we have a small amount in the different varieties that we just start with uh, like ashmo um, we have um, Blim plea, prima light, camber, and um, moonshine. The um, cassava that we are doing now is um, a variety we get from um, Cuba. Um, the name of the variety is um, Senorita. We also have a local variety, which is um, we call it Cadi M. Cole. And we also have one called CC09. These three varieties have different span for maturity. Like the Senorita is from seven to eight months, it should be matured. The Cardi M. Cool 
four and a half to five months, and the CCO9 is around the same thing, four and a half to five months. The government of Grenada has designated agriculture as one of the main vehicles for economic growth and social development. Because of this focus, there have been all wrong increases in agricultural production and the sector recorded a growth of 8.1% in 2011. The root crop exhibition will be held on June 1st at the Caranange Pedestrian Plaza. In the region, Trinidad and Tobago's Finance Minister Winston Dukaran has gone on record to state that his government has put in a claim to CL Financial for an estimated 20 billion TT dollars before the expiration of the shareholders' agreement in three weeks. The shareholders' agreement, which was signed on June 12, 2009, succeeded the Memorandum of Understanding of January 30, 2009, signed between the government, CL Financial, and the Central Bank. The shareholders' agreement allows the government to have controlling interest of the CL Financial Board. The final 280,000 US dollars of a debt owed by Guyana to Russia dating back to when that European country was part of the former Soviet Union will be cancelled. This gesture of debt forgiveness was announced by Russia's ambassador to Guyana, Nikolai Smirnov. Russia had already cancelled 16.3 million Guyanese dollars of the debt that the Caribbean nation had owed the former Soviet Union, which Russia inherited when the former Eastern European bloc broke up into the Commonwealth of Independent States. Smirnov says Russia is preparing to wipe off the remainder of Guyana's debt and also help the nation to combat drug trafficking. That's news. Sports is up next. Athletic season is not over as yet. Thursday, May 31st, get set for the annual Ribena Private Primary School Athletics Championship. National Athletic Stadium from 11 a.m. Be there for the sprints, throws, jumps, bicycle races, and the ever exciting relays. Will the Grenada Junior Academy continue to dominate or will one of the other 16 schools triumph? Only time will tell. Admission $10 adults, children pay three. So come root for your school. Thursday, May 31st, the 2012 Ribena sponsored Private Primary Schools Athletics Championship. Stars will be born. On your mark, set. The Windward Island Secondary Schools Games are coming to Grenada, July 28th to August 4th, 2012. Be there to see track and field, football, netball, basketball, and volleyball. It's going to be exciting as the best of the Windward Island's youth battle for supremacy. Catch the excitement as Grenada defends the title. It's the Windward Island Secondary Schools Games, July 28th to August 4th, 2012. Don't miss it. The shot comes into the far corner. It's a goal. Grenada have scored. Hello, England take a 1-0 lead in the three-match test series against the West Indies. Latouche Interior Grand Backlit had 2012 Westerhall Estate St. David Cricket League champions. Kirani James and Leshawn Merritt to clash in the Profontaine Classic in Oregon next uh, two weeks. Uh, Chelsea win the 2012 Champions League. And these are more on this edition of GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites, uh, starting off with cricket. West Indies failed to sustain the fire they showed on the fourth day and succumbed to a five-wicket defeat in the hands of England and the first test at Lords. After battling, battling fight back by Sydney Ranch and Paul and Marlon Samuels, who posted 157 for the fifth wicket, West Indies were dismissed for one for 3.45 in their second innings, with that England with 191 for victory. West Indies closed the fourth day on a high after grabbing two early wickets to leave England wobbly at 10 for 2. Hopes of a come-from-behind victory were building after England reached 57 for 4, but a crucial fifth wicket stand of 132 between 
Alistair Cook, 79, and Ian Bell, who scored an undefeated 63, saw England home. Roach grabbed three for 60 from 13 overs, and there was a regular piece for Darren Sammy and Marlon Samuel. Scores again, West Indies 243 and 345, England 398 and 193 for five. Uh, all attention is now focused on Trenbridge, where the second test starts on Friday. And what do you know? West Indies could be strengthened for the with the inclusion of the former West Indies captain Chris Gale for the remainder of the test series against England. Uh, according to reports coming out of London, skipper Darren Sammy and coach Otis Gibson will welcome the addition of the former West Indies captain. Following the exclusion of the Royal Challengers Bangalore from the Indian Premier League, Gale, who has made himself available for all versions of the game, could be ready earlier than expected. Both Sammy and Gibson told Sky Sports that Gale will be particularly welcome at this time, given the difficulty being experienced at the top of the order. So there is a possibility that Chris Gale could play for the West Indies in the second test uh, starting on Friday. News also coming out from the West Indies camp is that they are considering the inclusion of spinner Shane Schlingford and fast bowler Ravi Rampol for the second test. West Indies looking to fight back and level the series. Meantime, West Indies bat and Ramnari Sawan, who is having a successful season with Leicestershire in the English County Championships, says that he will not walk out of the county team at this time if he didn't recall for international duties. Uh, Sawan, who averages over 40 in test cricket, having scored over 5,000 runs, says that he owes plenty of gratitude to Leicestershire, who invested in him. Sawan says that he was mentally and emotionally disturbed by coach Otis Gibson, who made negative comments about him. He adds that the bad mouthing by the coach took a toll on his confidence, which went away. The stylish right the stylish right-handed Guyanese batsman said that he wanted to quit but was forced to continue playing by his father. Sawan, who lost his central contract in 2010 after scoring 83 runs in four test matches, says that he's pleased to be out of the West Indies setup at this moment because his mind is at ease, the problems are behind him, and he is en again enjoying the game of cricket. Sawan, who captain Leicestershire in the absence of skipper Matthew Hoggard, who was injured, uh, has been in good form, scoring two centuries and two half centuries in recent matches. Uh, still with cricket, uh, Dwayne Smith played a scintillating knock to lead the Mumbai Indians to an emphatic 10 wicket win over the Rajasthan Royals in the Indian Premier League on Sunday. Smith smashed uh, an unbeaten 86 from just 58 balls with 10 fours and uh, three sixes to lead the Mumbai Indians to a victory target of 163 without loss. He teamed up with the little master Sachin Tendulkar, who scored an unbeaten 58 from 51 balls with six fours to set a new record for the highest opening stand in a run chase in the IPL. The Rajasthan Royals scored 162 with knocks of uh, 43 by Shane Watson and 40 by Bini. While the Mumbai Indians with the likes of Smith and Pollard and Tenduka advanced to the semi-finals, the Royal Challengers Bangalore of Chris Gale bowed out, losing by nine runs to the Deccan Chargers. The Chargers scored 132 and the Challengers could only reply with 123 for nine. So it's the New Delhi Daredevils against the Kolkata Knight Riders in the first semi-final on Tuesday and the Mumbai Indies against the Chennai Super Kings in the other on Wednesday. Here at home, Latouche and Tia Grand Bacalit are the champions of the 2012 Western Hall Estates St. David's two-day cricket tournament. Uh, they did so by gaining first innings points over combined forces in the final played over the weekend at the Bellevue Plain Field. Uh, they won the toss on a damp wicket and inserted the opposition, dismissing them for just 135. Uh, the former Grenada and Rhode Island's player John Sylvester bagged 5 for 33 from 20.3 overs and Kirk Baffert 2 for 44 from 7 overs. Uh, Dickie Chitram scored an unbeaten 28 and there were also 22 from Melvin Bartholomew and 21 from the bat of uh, Sujatan. 
The champion replied in style, reaching 369 for 8. Uh, John Sylvester led the way with 89. Raymond Duncan scored 40. Kellen George, 43. Kurt Bradford, 38. And Roland Cato the Young, William Allen's player, 30. There were two big apiece for Moses Farmers, Chester Redhead, and Kel George. Batting a second time, combined forces reached 81 for 3, with Samuel Worm on the field on 24, and Sujitan again playing well, getting 43. In athletics, uh, world 400 meters champion Kirani James will test his readiness for an Olympic gold medal when he goes up against a strong field in the Pro, Pro Fountain Classic in Eugene, Oregon on June the 2nd. James will be up against the likes of Olympic champion Leshawn Merritt, the 2004 Olympic champion Jeremy Warriner, and the Olympic 400 meters hurdles champion American Angelo Taylor. According to reports, European 400 meters champion Kevin Borley of Belgium, the 2010 world Indo champion Christopher Brown of the Bahamas, and South African Oscar Pistorius are also in the lineup. James wound up installed for the race with a smashing 44.62 or make that 72 seconds run to capture the IEF Daegu Challenge last week in South Korea. It was refreshing memories for the 19-year-old who won the World Championships there last August, clocking 44.60 seconds. James the Jaguar will be looking for another scorching run as he steps up his preparations for the Summer Olympics in London starting in July. Over $15,000 are up for grabs in the Scott Super 10 basketball tournament which jumps off at the Computer Spark in Guav uh, next week Saturday, June the 2nd. Uh, the tournament being staged for the first time was launched last week Friday at the National Stadium in St. George's. Sales and marketing manager Randy Campbell says that, that they are keen to keep basketball alive and kicking in the fishing paradise. This tournament will be no different with the investment that Scott, along with its partners like Fruta, Axe, and Locozade, have all pledged to this venture to make it another success story. Scott's investment into this tournament is in the, in the amount of $15,600, with $11,600 being direct investment to the tournament and 4,000 going to attractions and giveaways during the course of the tournament. Several attractive uh, prizes are earmarked for the champion teams and individuals. We have committed that the winners of this tournament will receive $3,000 plus a trophy. The second place team will receive $1,500 plus a trophy. The third place team will receive $1,000 plus a trophy. The MVP of the tournament will receive $300 plus a trophy. And the coach of the tournament will receive $500 plus a replica or plaque. That's uh, Scott's official there, Randy Campbell. The event has been organized by the St. John Sports Council. Member Anthony Benjamin thanked the sponsors for the support and assured them that they will be organizing a top-notch event. I must say a special thanks to Mr. Campbell and the Scott brand for partnering with us in these very challenging economic times to provide sponsorship for the tournament. I must also urge the teams, the players, to come out there and represent basketball very well. Because without a good representation, we may not get sponsorship in the future. We have to show the sponsors that basketballers and the sport of basketball is worthy enough to be sponsored. So on behalf of all the volunteers of the St. John Sports Council, let me again say thank you very much to Huggins, and we look forward to another successful championship. Thank you. Member of the St. John's Sports Council, Anthony Benjamin. Finally, these celebrations are still probably on in London after Chelsea won the Champions League on Saturday. They seemed dung and out in the 83rd minute when Bayern Munich uh, took the lead. And uh, in the final in Germany. But Didier Jogber headed home the equalizer in the 88th minute, which forced extra time and eventually a penalty kick. 
The scores were level at three all when uh, Jogba stepped up to put away his shot, which sent the Chelsea fans in the arena wild and those in London ecstatic. Uh, thousands of fans lined the street at Stamford Bridge on Saturday as the players and officials paraded uh, the trophy. Well, that was on Sunday. It was reminiscent of the 2010 when more than 70,000 celebrated Chelsea's victory at the English Premier League. Uh, it was a wonderful end to a very indifferent season for Chelsea. We saw them fall out of the top three in the English Premier League. They finished sixth in the competition, 25 points behind leaders Manchester City and Manchester United, who finished on 89 points. Of course, Manchester City winning on a better goal uh, difference. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. <laughs> see the gossip get it signed, I won't be judged. So I don't feel stress or guilty about protecting myself. I can buy condoms without any pressure. The yellow and black sign, it means this is a cool place where me and my girl can get condoms and we can be safe every time. I like the fact that they are looking out for me because I'm trying to look out for myself. Before, I used to be very nervous and now everything's cool. Start your morning with the Government Information Service. Tune in to GIS Spice Morning, Mondays through Fridays, starting 6.45 a.m. Spice up and brighten your morning with an informative television show with guests from a broad cross-section of society. You too can be a part of our Spice Morning. Call us at 440-2061 or email gisgrenada at yahoo.com. GIS TV Channel 12. Your best choice for educational and entertaining television. Thank you, Trevor. Before we wrap up, just to let you know that another in the series of diaspora discussions will take place on Tuesday. It will be held in St. David's at the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. It begins at 6 p.m. and is expected to end at 8 p.m. Recapping the main points, hundreds turn out to support Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas at Thanksgiving rally in St. Andrew. A call for inclusion of academia if the EPA is to work and close to 50 young people have become full-fledged national youth ambassadors. That is the GIS News Hour. I'm Leslie and Johnson Cornwall. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing. You're watching the Government Information Service, channels 12 and 22.